Hello, everyone. As uh, we promised, uh, in this lecture, we can now start analyzing circuits that include uh, inductors. So uh, as you know by now, all we really needed to know was what's uh, the equation for the inductor to be able to follow the normal algorithm, the, the universal algorithm that we always use. And then uh, we also know that with uh, inductors and for that matter, and capacitors included in the um, circuit, the uh, math part of the algorithm is going to include solution uh, for uh, a differential equation. And if you're dealing with only one inductor or one capacitor or bunch of inductors or capacitors that could be turned into one inductor or capacitor, equivalent inductor or capacitor, you're going to be dealing with uh, a first order differential equation. And this is the solution for a simplified um, first order differential equation. So I'm going to, we're going to now today practice uh, analyzing a circuit with an inductor uh, using that algorithm and you're going to see that it's really similar to what we did for capacitors. Okay, so this is the circuit that we're going to analyze. The first step would be to uh, label the circuit like always. So we have this node, and this node, and then we have this node, and this node. Okay, so you should notice that uh, the switch is across this component in the circuit. Uh, what that means, first of all, every time that we have a switch, we discuss that, we actually have to analyze two different circuits. There's one circuit before the switch, and there's another circuit after the switch. Usually, this, the circuit before the switch is going to give you the information about the initial condition that you require for sol solving the differential equation once the switch uh, is, the switching is done and you're doing the second uh, part of the circuit. Um, so with this, you realize that before the switch, that part, that line in the circuit is gone. This basically is only the circuit that you're dealing with, and therefore uh, that that component has to be counted in. While once this switch is over, this piece of wire actually is going to create a zero volt uh, dif potential difference across this three ohm resistor which means that uh, there is not going to be any current passing through that resistor anymore because uh, the current that is passing through the resistor is the voltage across it divided by the resistance and once the voltage goes away uh, then there's no current and or uh, simply you can say that you can take that component away and there's going to be just a short circuit there. So sometimes this is called uh, putting a uh, wire across a component is called shorting the component out. So if you hear something like that, that basically means that you put a wire across the components and that uh, component is no longer operating or it's not part of the circuit. It's not uh, affecting the circuit anymore. Okay, so before the switch, T smaller than zero before the switch, we have, that's our ground. I can write the equation for this component. This immediately becomes 20 volts. Now, uh, this I can call V1T. I can call this one V2T. Then the current here, I'm going to call it I1T. And obviously, the current passing through all of these are I1T, I1T and I1T. And with that, all the components are now uh, labeled. All the nodes are labeled and all the currents are labeled. So now we, we just remind ourselves that the equation for the inductor was uh, the voltage across the inductor is equal to the inductance multiplied by derivative of the current with respect to time. Um, so uh, for a general case, if this was V1T and this was V2T, and there was current ILT passing, this was inductance value of L, then V1T minus V2T is equal to inductance times derivative of the current ILT with respect to time. That's the equation for that component. So we go 
back to this. Normally in these situations, there, there is a piece of information that has to be given to you, and it's normally given in a format similar to this. They say this switch before t equal to zero has been in this position for a very long time. So what that means, or what that conveys to you, is that before the switch, uh, everything that had to be uh, changed, like everything that had to be settled down in a circuit, has reached a steady state, meaning that the voltages and currents in the circuit have reached a steady state. Every time that you have a time varying uh, parameter in, in, in the system, if you apply a step, meaning that you change something instantaneously, for example, when you turn the uh, power source on. So before you turn it on, the voltage is zero, right after the voltage becomes 20 volts in this case. Then uh, all the currents and voltages are going to be function of time, but since after, after the, uh, the, the voltage source is turned on, this voltage is going to stay constant. Over time, the whole system is going to reach a steady state if you give it, give it enough time. So we now by, by now we know that basically everything that changes in a circuit is an exponential function, and therefore when the time passes, everything settles down. So what that tells you is that right before the switch, I, I can assume that all the currents and voltages in the system are uh, constant, basically. Now, if that's the case, then you look at this equation and you say, okay, if everything in the circuit is constant, that includes the currents that are passing in the, uh, uh, through the circuit or pa current passing through the components. So therefore, I1t, which is the current that is passing to the inductor, is constant. And therefore, the derivative of a constant current would be zero, which means that the voltage across it is actually zero, right? So in other words, right before the switch, because of the way that the inductor behaves, or the physics of the inductor, we can conclude that V2T right before the switch is actually is equal to the voltage on the other side, which is zero. And that completely simplifies the circuit, right? At that point, this behaves like a ground, and now writing the equations for these components is a, is a really simple circuit of a voltage that is applied across two resistors in series, so you can simply add them up, divide the voltage by the two resistors, add it up to each other, get the current, so you can actually say, therefore, that I1, so this is T, um, I'm going to rewrite this. This is V2 right before the switch, so 0 minus. So in other words, I1 0 minus is equal to 20 divided by 4 ohm, 1 plus 3, and that would be 5 amp. So now you have that voltage, and now you, if you want the voltage V1T, that's easy, that's 0. So V one, if you need that, zero minus, is basically, you write the equation for that component, V1T minus zero uh, divided by three is five, so therefore, V1 minus is five times three, which is 15 volts. And done, you have calculated all the uh, parameters, in voltages and currents in a circuit right before the switch. And that's it. Now you move on to the next step, which is t greater or equal to zero. Now, for this part, as we discussed, we can completely ignore that resistor. So once the switch is done, this component is gone. And in other words, V2t and V1t are the same node. So I'm going to remove V2T and redo the labeling so that now these two are the same node. 
we will have only V1 T and there is no current passing through that 3 ohm resistor after the switch. Okay, so now this is after the switch. There's the 1 ohm, the 3 ohm is not part of the circuit anymore. All the current is going to pass through that piece of wire and all that current is going to pass through the inductor. Okay, so everything else stays the same. We start writing equations here again. Um, there is no KCL, obviously. There is only one current, so um, I don't have to do KCL. In other words, I've already done KCL. So now I move on to writing equations for components. So equations for components. So for the 1 ohm, I have I1T is equal to 20 minus V1T divided by 1. And for the inductor, that's the equation, right? So V1T minus 0, which is V1T, is equal to the inductance, uh, which is 80 times 10 to the minus 3. That would be 0.08 times DI1T dt. So with that... Uh, this concludes the equations for the circuit, and all that's left is writing, is doing the math. So we have two equations and two unknowns. I take uh, one of these and replace the other one. Um, I can either take V1T, replace it there, or take I1T, or replace it here. Either way, you can calculate both. So let's pick one. Let's say I'm going to take... Um, uh, let's say I'm going to take I1T and put it in this equation. Okay, so if I do that, then 0.08D, now I1T is that equation, so 20 minus V1T dt, which means DI1T dt is equal to 0.08 that's 0 times minus, uh, sorry, this was V1T is equal to, V1T is equal to minus DVT dt. So I can move that to the other side. And this turns into d v one t d t plus v one t divided by point zero eight is equal to zero. Let me check everything. I divided both sides by point zero eight, then moved it to the other side. I'm doing this to basically bring this equation into that format. The, familiar format so that I can use uh, the given solution for it. Okay, so with that, I'm um, in that format given y is uh, my v1. So now I, I start writing that solution. So first of all, v infinity is k times tau. This is tau, k is 0, so v infinity is 0 immediately. I don't have to do anything with the circuit anymore. Everything is given here. Um, so V1T is equal to, now, V infinity is 0 plus, now, V0, you already calculate that. Keep in mind, I have V1, 0 minus, so I have to be careful here. And make sure that everything checks out. So see, with this equation, what this equation is going to tell me is that the um, voltage is derivative of current. So the current cannot, this limits how the current in a circuit can behave. In other words, if the current in a circuit changes abruptly, the current uh, that is passing through the inductor changes abruptly, then the derivative of a sudden change is actually infinity, and that means the voltage in the circuit is going to become infinity. So 
generally speaking, that's something uh, that is prohibited. In other words, the current that is passing through inductor is not going to change abruptly. So once you have a current at a t equal to zero minus, that would be the current for t equal to zero, and that would be the current for t equal to zero plus. But the voltage across the inductor, there is no such thing about the voltage. In other words, the, the voltage across the inductor could actually change abruptly. So I can't just say since V10 minus is 15 volt, then V10 and V10 plus are also uh, 15 volts. Uh, in other words, I have to recalculate V10 plus. If, it, if I write this equation for IT, then I can use I10 minus as the initial condition for I10 and I10 plus because this equation limits how the current passing through the inductor is going to behave. In other words, the current going through the inductor has to be uh, basically uh, continuous. It can't suddenly change. Whereas the voltage can, there is no limitation for the voltage to change suddenly because it's a derivative of a current and even if the current is changing continuously, um, the derivative of a function that is con continuously changing could be discontinuous. So with that, we have to go back and understand that right after the switch, the voltage uh, V1 is going to change from something that was before the switch to something that is now after the switch. Um, so but with the, right before the switch, that's 15 volts and the voltage here was zero. The voltage V uh, across the inductor was zero. Now, right after the switch, we are connecting that voltage to this voltage, and since the current that is passing through these is not gonna change, therefore, this voltage on the other end is constant, and that means that this voltage on this end, assuming that the current is not changing, is also not going to change immediately. So I can then extend this and say that given what's going on in this circuit, V10 plus and zero are also 15 volts. But that's not always the case. In this specific case, we do have a situation when the voltage before and after are the same and uh, we can use it, but we have to be careful with that. So we go back here. So Y V10 is 15, and that's minus 0 e to the minus T over tau, which is 0 0.08. And therefore, the equation becomes 15 E minus T 0 0.08. That concludes our solution. Now, you can take this equation for the voltage, put it back here, and this equation calculate the equation for the current, and everything checks out. Um, if, uh, if we wrote, if we chose this equation for V1t and put it in that equation to begin with, we would get a different differential equation, and we, when we solve that differential equation, we would get the equation for the current, and at that point, we can take that and put it back here and calculate the voltage. Now, let's understand what is going on with this equation more. So, at t equal to zero, right after the switch, this equation is equal to uh, 15, which is what we just discussed. At t equal to infinity, this equation actually turns into zero again. So let's make sense of that. So after the switch, the voltage jumps before, right before this voltage was zero, and then it jumps to 15 volts, and then you give it enough time over infinite amount of time, it goes back to zero. So what's going on in here is that right after the switch, you have a change in the circuit. That change causes the voltage to jump across the inductor. The current is also going to become a function of time. But then you give it enough time, as we said, the, since the operation in the circuit with only one inductor and resistors uh, is going to give us uh, exponential functions for uh, currents and voltages, 
you wait long enough, everything is going to again settle down, meaning that the currents are going to settle down and voltages are going to settle down. Now, once the current going through the inductor again settles down, settles down to a new value, since it's still a constant current, this equation tells us that the voltage across the inductor is going to become zero. In other words, that voltage is going to go back to becoming zero again. So if you look at uh, this, uh, the, the voltage here over time, so before t equal to zero, I'm going to try to draw it here. So let me see, yeah. So it's zero all the all the way to to uh, t equal to zero, and this is t. Then it jumps to fifteen, and then exponentially goes down and becomes zero again. So that's how the voltage right for that node is going to behave. Now the current is going to behave differently. The current that was passing through was before the switch was five amp. And if you want to know what happens at infinity, you can solve this or make sense of it this way. Um, just put back, back this back in here. You can actually calculate it just doing uh, math, but also you can uh, make sense of it in the circuit. If this voltage in infinity becomes zero again, your circuit is really simple. It's a 20 volt across one ohm because that's zero. So it becomes 20 divided by one, 20 amp. So the, the current changes like this. The current was five amp before and then it it's going to basically exponentially increase to 20 amp and settles down at 20 amp at t equal to infinity so that was the voltage for the current the behavior is going to be something like this it's 5 and then goes up and reaches 15 5 to 15 amp uh, 5 to sorry 5 to 20 amp not 15. In, in other words, 15 amp would be added to it. And uh, that concludes analysis for this circuit. Um, in the next lecture, I'm going to show you the same way that we did for capacitor. I'm going to show you uh, a, a shortcut to solving uh, circuits, including the inductor. And I'm going to use the same circuit to make my point. Uh, thank you.